Hello everyone, welcome to another video from the AI loop. Today we're going to be looking at dropout. It's a regularization technique used in deep learning to prevent our neural network from overfitting the training data. So let's see how it works. Well, dropout, let's start off by covering a bit of background as to why we need dropout. As I did say earlier, it's mainly because of the overfitting problem. And let's try to understand this a bit more. So how does overfitting happen in a neural network? So understand that in machine learning problem or any AI use case, you have input data and you map, out, map it to output data. And here, all the way in between, you use a model, right? And let's take a use case like object detection or something that is complex, a task that is complex to achieve. So usually for these kind of tasks, what you do is when you define a neural network, generally the architecture of this neural network is complex, right? Because simple architectures really cannot perform as well as the ones that are complex. So in this case, when the neural network is complex, and when I say the neural network is complex, I mean it in the terms of weights and the bias if you add it, like the number of parameters, if you're considering it as a whole. So the more the number of parameters and more the number of layers, the complex it is. So if we consider an architecture like this, where the neural network is complex, what happens is that there are too many uh, learning parameters, right? Too many weights. And usually in situations like object detection or like most probably like this is true for the uh, type of tasks which involve uh, frames. So you would not be having much of a data, right? Like the quantity of the data would be less. So usually what happens is that when the data is less and the complex of the or the complexity of the architecture that you're using is uh, high, the model tends to overfit the data. So in a machine learning model, usually we have the training data and the testing data, right? So what we need is our model to perform well on the training data as well as on the test data too. And when your model overfits or learns too much from the training data, what happens is that it performs poorly on the testing data. And this is not something we desire. The main goal of a model is uh, to generalize, right? Because we want to use it in cases that it's not seen yet. So this way overfitting can really be a problem and in neural networks, let's see how we can address this overfitting problem. And that is by using dropout. So that is the background covered for us. And now let's see how dropout works. So let's start by understanding guys. There are two stages, right? Like two stages as in if I define the working of a model, there's a training and let me actually write it as an inference stage, right? This is where you deploy the model and you actually want to make it work. And this is where you train the model. And let's first look at the training stage of a model, right? So let's see. And let me draw a neural network to illustrate how a dropout works. So let's take a neural network with four inputs. Maybe it's connected to three in the hill layer and two and goes all the way to one. So the way a neural network works is that you give four inputs here basically and each of the input is passed or connected to all other uh, neurons in the second layer, like the hidden layer, one here. And each of this has an associated weight, right? And this is basically what we're trying to say that if your model is complex, if, you, if the architecture of your neural network is complex, so there are so many of these learning parameters and remember that like in any neural network, weights are what we control and these are the learning parameters. And if you have too many of these, the model learns too much of the training data itself because that's what you're passing in to optimize your model. So this is where we apply the regularization technique called dropout. So the way dropout works is that, remember that this way, the other three neural networks, sorry, neurons, will also be connected to each of the other neurons in the hidden layer. So I'll not be drawing everything in here, but that's the idea. So what happens in dropout is that you first choose uh, hyperparameters. 
that is the dropout probability let me just write it as this and um, in pytorch it's by default 0 0.5 so let's just consider it like 0 0.5 to be a dropout probability it's also easier for illustration purposes so in the starting layer like i'm passing in four inputs right if i apply a dropout with the dropout probability of 0 0.5 right here what the neural network does sorry what the uh, how the implementation is done in the training phase is that these two inputs like randomly two inputs are selected and let's say this is for the first epoch okay like the first run through your training loop so these two will randomly be dropped and let's say here i select a dropout probability of 0 0.5 one of these neural network neuron will be randomly dropped and let's assume this is what the one dropped and why we're dropping is that basically from the input we're passing information and the information is communicated by various forms all the way to the output right and what we want to do is limit the information that's reaching the output so we have four features what we're doing is we're cutting down the number of features to two so the model only learns think of it as like let's say this is the whole space of where your training data covers you're only passing half of it to the uh, model to learn from it sorry uh, i must have drawn it outside the screen so you're only passing half of it for the model to learn and the other half you're not really passing it right now because you don't want the model to learn the whole training set and stick to it and like just be able to perform well on it and not generalize further. So that is kind of intuition behind dropping out. So what happens is that when you do have like when you did drop out 0.5 in the first layer and 0.5 in the let's say this is the third layer. So what happens is that these go now, like these two inputs are not passed. And at the implementation level, the way this is done is that all the weights that are connected to this particular neuron are set to zero. So whatever you pass in, it's multiplied by zero and added up and activation function, it, at the end it becomes zero. So you, you basically pass nothing or you basically add no value from this particular neuron to the output and that way you do regularization and let's say you come all the way like you get an output and you calculate the loss function and you have the uh, you have the back propagation then and in the back propagation you update these uh, neurons right only the neurons which are actually active right you update these particular neurons weights and in the second time like let's say i'm running it for two epochs and in the second epoch, what happens is that, again, a random set of uh, neurons are dropped. Maybe last time these two are dropped. Now maybe we drop like this one and this one. I'm so sorry it's getting messy in here. But I hope you got the idea that like every time you go through one training loop, you pick a set of neurons and drop it. And the number of neurons you drop depends on this particular parameter the dropout probability that you pass in to the neural network ideally we don't really drop out like half of the input data because the input data is something we would not want to drop out we usually do uh, the dropouts in the hidden layers that's that's the most ideal case and now let's let's clear that up a bit and let's look at the inference stage so how does dropout like actually work at the inference stage so I'm just drawing like a shallow neural network here. And again, let's, for the demonstration purpose, I'm gonna take this first uh, input layer and add a dropout probability of 0 0.5 here. But usually remember that you don't usually drop out half of the training data. You, you ideally wanna pass all of your training data, maybe drop out somewhere in the between, like in the middle layers. So at the inference stage, you cannot just like randomly drop uh, this particular neuron right because everything has learned something and like it's like you cannot just randomly drop this particular neuron or something right so let's say i apply a dropout here to of 0 0.3 and let's take like one of the neuron gets dropped due to that so what really happens is that at the inference stage when you're doing the input 
because I've up because let's in the training stage maybe I've applied a dropout probability of 0 0.3 but at the inference stage all the neurons are connected remember that all the neurons are connected to each other so you basically do not drop any like you basically do not set any of the weights to zeros but what you actually do is that I'll demonstrate it with like an example here so if the dropout probability is 0 0.5 here let's say this is to be a middle layer or like a starting layer or whatever that is and if the dropout probability is 0 0.5 at the training stage remember that two of the neurons at random will be dropped right so what that means is that only information from two other neurons is getting passed like take whichever epoch what you do is drop two neur neurons so basically every time you're only passing two of the inputs or two of the weights like you're only considering information from two of the neurons so what that does is that at the inference stage if you just like don't apply the dropout and don't take these neurons what really happens is that in, in an intuitive way you could think of it as that you're doubling the amount of information that's been passed so uh, usually the loss function and everything and back propagation and all the optimizations that ever has happened to that neural network is based on the input that is coming from two neurons right because you've only ever passed two neurons and never passed all the four neurons as the input and in order to compensate for this or make up for this at the inference stage because at the inference stage you're not dropping any of the neurons what you do is that for the input weights let's say this is the model and let me just like rub these arrows for the input weights so you have the input weights coming here right from any layer here and what you do is that for the input weights you take that particular weight and you multiply it with the dropout property of 0.5 and what this does is for every neuron whatever weight it has you only ever pass half of it because you're multiplying the weights by 0.5 it basically reduces the weights by half so it's it's the same way think of it like this that like out of four you're passing two inputs at the training stage and out of four you're taking all the four but you're only passing half of the weight for all the four right like half of the weight for all the four neurons at the entrance stage and this is how you balance the entrance stage in the training stage i hope uh, this is clear for you guys and just like i mean just like one more thing that i have to cover regarding the dropout probability it's the loss function so how does the loss function get affected at the dropout probability remember that every time in a neural network you're having an input and an output your loss function is getting calculated from the output generated right and if you're having a dropout implemented basically every time what's happening is that let's say here like this one and this one is dropped out only inputs from these neurons are going into the output and the output like the loss function is getting calculated and basically the update is getting the update is happening for these neural networks right and the update is never happening for these ones so this the weights for these stay the same after this epoch and what really happens in the second epoch is that let's say this is something that's passed as an input right now and uh, this is the one that's being cancelled out because each time the dropout probability like the neurons that are dropped out are selected at random and let's say this one is being passed as an input too but this one is being dropped out right now at this time what happens is that the output you get is not like an optimized one like it's not really based on the previous one because this is a different number like a weight and this is a different weight and when these two are not considered in the previous ones but these two are considered and all of a sudden you drop these two and you consider these weights what really basically this does not have a weight this is the input feature but yeah i hope you get the idea what happens is that this weight is kind of different from these two weights right and when you're passing the output the output generated is a different one so 
ideally if you see a loss function curve you want it to be uh, going down right like at a stable rate but in this case when you do a dropout this is no dropout and when you actually do a dropout i mean doesn't necessarily have to be this way but like this is something that you should observe it might be wavy like it might be too unstable or not so smooth but at the end of the day sorry the end of the training it still like goes down because uh, the inputs or the weights are being optimized every time you pass the input but remember that it will not be as smooth as compared to a neural network trained without uh, the use of dropout so that is something interesting to know about the loss function do let me know if something is unclear in the comments and that's it regarding the dropout probability and dropout layer it's, it's it's really helpful in regularizing the neural network and limiting it to overfit the training data so yeah that's it regarding dropout thank you everyone for tuning in please subscribe to ai loop and please leave any ideas or anything that you want me to make a video on in the comment section i'll see you in the next video